Hey guys, welcome back to Meds Made Easy. My name is Tarun. Today let's talk about Temazepam, also known as Restoril. It is used for insomnia. Now how does it work? It, it works by inhibiting your GABA receptor, so it keeps more GABA in your brain. Essentially the easy way to put it is the more GABA you have, the more calm you are. It, it's like a relaxer. Um, it's a brain chemical that causes that. Sorry, I had to mention that part of it. It's a brain chemical that causes you to relax more. Um, so let's see, let's get into this. Dosages are around, you know, 7.5 to 15 to 30 milligrams. There's no max dose really, but you have to watch out for it because it does cause sedation. So in pediatrics, in children, you don't generally use this. In the elderly, there's always going to be a fall risk. So you have to kind of watch out for that. Make sure you have someone with you, around you, a spouse, someone, uh, if you're on this medication. Um, you know, like sleepwalking and stuff like that can happen, but it's not really common. But you're always going to be a fall risk just because you're going to be really, really drowsy. And that's the whole point. It needs to put you to sleep, right? Um, let's see here. Uh, there's a black box warning for using it with opioids. So opioids being, you know, hydrocodones, Percocets, uh, anything in that sort of class of drugs. Taking them together is going to cause increased sedation. Uh, and respiratory depression. So respiratory depression means trouble breathing. Um, if you have too much respiratory depression, it means you're probably not breathing enough to get oxygen to your brain and stuff, so you could die, you go into a coma. A lot of ODs happen because people are stacking these drugs together, whether they're partying with them or they're using them for medicinal purposes, but then they just want that added extra sedation factor and the high to it. So, you know, you, those things can cause issues. So there's a black box warning for it because there have been plenty of people who've stacked the medications and have died on them. Um, it's a pregnancy class X, meaning you cannot be on this medication while you're pregnant. Uh, your doctor will have to switch you to something else. Um, breast milk, they say to use caution because there's not too much evidence, but you need to be talking through with it with your doctor to make sure that it's safe. But in most cases, I think you still try to uh, avoid this if you can. You avoid this medication completely while you're breastfeeding. If you have renal or hepatic issues, uh, liver issues, uh, you will need to adjust the dosages. So make sure that your doctor is in the loop on this or all your doctors are in the loop. I know sometimes we have patients will have tons of doctors who prescribe different medications. Make sure everyone's on the same page and they know what each and every person is giving you uh, so it doesn't interact. Um, time to peak in your blood is about 1.2 hours to 1.6 hours. Um, and then half-life, meaning half, you know, Elimination in your body could be anywhere from 3.5 hours to 18 hours. It just depends on your body chemistry and your body dynamics. Half-life, then that's a half-life. Half-life meaning half the drug will be out of your system anywhere between 3.5 hours to 18.4. Um, that's just the way we kind of talk about it in, in the medical world, half-life. Um, so it could be potentially long, it could be potentially short. It just depends on your body and how you process it. Um, here's a list of side effects we're going to put up right here. Um, really, you know, the big ones you want to watch out for is like the drowsiness, lethargy, things like that, because it is going to down you. So if you don't get in a car and drive on this medication, um, I, I think that goes without without saying, but you, you know, it doesn't hurt to mention it. Um, another quick little bit, a lot of people will take exogenous GABA, so exogenous meaning like over-the-counter neurotransmitter and stuff like that. Um, you can actually buy GABA. It's not exactly the best stuff ever. You shouldn't really be taking it, but the science suggests that it can't even cross your, your blood-brain barrier, so your brain is encompassed by a membrane, kind of like a, a, like a plastic, um, to kind of protect it from anything getting into it. So this is the neurochemical that your brain produces, but if you're taking it by mouth and you're taking capsules and it can't even penetrate through that sac to get into your brain, then it's really useless. So, you know, you're, I don't think the stuff's that expensive, but still, you, you're coming out of pocket for something that's not going to help. Uh, so just watch out for that because I know a lot of people go, well, why should I take this medication when I can take the exogenous stuff over the counter for it? And it's not the same stuff at all. It, the science doesn't work that way. Um, in fact, when you have most, a lot of people try to take it and then they'll come back and go, yeah, I didn't do anything because the science suggests it can't even penetrate your brain. So it won't be able to increase the amount of GABA in your brain. So 
no extra GABA means no relaxation, no no sleep. So you know you're not getting what you need, guys. That's it. I hope you got what you needed from this. Leave questions, comments below. Give us a subscribe on the channel. Let us know how we're doing. If you need help with other drugs, let us know what videos you want us to make, and we're happy to do it. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time on Meds Made Easy. Bye.